We want to follow up. This is taking place in the summer and the fall of 1940. What's taking place in the United States in November of 1940? An election. Roosevelt is running on a platform of keeping us out of war. So London is targeted. London is bombed, and effectively it resembles an earthquake. Remember, this is really arguably the leading city on the planet at this time. And Britain, while they have held off the German advances, their resources are virtually depleted. War has come home in a way that World War I never did. And massive infrastructure development, living in a siege of war, and really just this fear, this absolute fear, which is why this bombing cities is equated to terrorism. Yeah, most of us during the Cold War remember growing up with these duck and cover drills. This is where they originated from, in Britain during the bombing. And these must have been the strongest wooden desks in the world if they would protect these kids. I love showing in my history classes a uh, cartoon, if you guys remember from our experience here in the States, Birth the Turtle, teaching us to duck and cover. But that's where this comes from. And this was the original duck and cover as a way of sort of riding out the impending bombs and earthquake. I think it tells us that in the midst of any tragedy, life always does go on. And certainly, despite the horrors of war, we need milk. George, you give us a little uh, video on here, please? In September, the Germans began their nighttime blitz on London. By now, both sides had abandoned the policy of avoiding civilian casualties. When you are ready, said God, let your streets are overrun with the homeless and the hungry and the old. Not to mention, said God, that your buildings by the ton are succumbing to our area of assault. And the palace of your king as a plant in the community. Crazy cockney, the blitzkrieg must be gone. It's a diet modulation. By the stubborn hesitation. But about capitulation, says the heart. Now a staff officer at the Air Ministry, Arthur Harris watched the blitz with the Chief of the Air Staff, Sir Charles Hawthorne. Yes, I remember the night well. You could see some coal standing out amidst the flames. And uh, I felt Porter who was still working down in his office. I said, you've got to come up and see this because it's uh, something that will probably never occur again. Or we hope will occur again. It's worth seeing. And I said then, well, they're sowing the wind and they will reap the whirlwind. In retaliation, Churchill urged the RAF to begin mass bombing attacks on German cities. The Prime Minister knew that if public morale was to survive the blitz, Britain had to be seen to be hitting back. After Dunkirk, any land attack was out of the question. To a desperate nation, the only weapon available was the bomber. And I think we take this for granted in today's warfare, but like they said, this was the last attempt, a desperate nation, and thus Britain would start sending sorties over toward Berlin. And very, very short effective rate uh, really was just, the targets were virtually unhittable. But as Churchill stated, it was much more for morale. Yes, sir, you have a question? What most people don't understand is that England actually attacked German cities before they weren't on a massive scale attack. Then the original German attack on London was an accident. And 
and that's really interesting that for those of yeah. you who hear that, yes, yeah, reaffirming that it was England that would send their attacks toward the, toward the German cities first. They did that first. And indeed, in many respects, it was, quote, a mistake to attack these cities. If that was the British model, not to attack civilians and cities like this, did that last throughout the war? No. Not at all. But it look wasn't at, this kind. Look at Dresden. There wasn't a soul alive. 630,000 people in three night attacks. That wasn't humane. It was an undefended city. Well, you're exactly right. And part of what, one of the challenges when we start history is remember, we know the ending. So it's really, I just want to remember to caution us. You're exactly right, sir. Try not to read ahead just yet. Because right now, the destruction of Dresden, the firebombing of Tokyo, this has not happened. And it's not even on anybody's radar. And it shows you how war evolves. And this really evolved to the absolute total war. And you're right, we've got some photos that have just shown the, the very horror of that. Yes, sir? Originally, Britain was not attacking cities. They, uh, I think the stone already said that in, in one way. They were attacking uh, the, uh, well, anything to do with shipbuilding, ammunition, anything like that. But there was a navigational error one night. So they dropped some bombs on the city. Hitler was enraged and said they do it to us, we'll do it to them. Yeah, well, the city the German planes that first bombed London were accidental navigation. Oh, I don't believe that. Yeah. No, I don't believe that. No, no, not the book I read. Well, the ones I read said that because they said that uh, it was a, uh, it was just the one flight. They had not been told the bomb London, but they got lost and stuff, and they were under attack, so they just dropped their bombs. So it kind of both sides is there. And again, I think what we can clearly agree on is that both sides were very reluctant to bomb civilians. Yes, that would become wholesale as the war would evolve, but at this time. Very reluctant. Do you have a Go. Yeah. Well, while all this was going on, before the, before the Germans started their big blitz on London, they were going after DRA and the whole, the first stage of Operation Sea Lion was to win air superiority over Britain. However, when, when Hitler got really angry and shifted all those bombers to attack London, the RAF almost breathed a sigh of relief. I know how that sounds, but it really almost did pretty much save them. I mean, if the Germans would have just kept it up, they would have wiped the RAF off the map and would have been cleared to invade England. That's a very astute point, and community members, I just find it hard not to be impressed with young people looking at history 70 years ago. Wonderful, 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 wonder